Hello, I'm Tristram Hooley. I'm going to be talking in this lecture about defining social justice, which is the term that really sits at the heart of this whole course. So we started to explore the issue of social justice in our induction session, where we got you talking about social justice. And we also presented a few ideas about what social justice might mean. It's worth recognising that social justice is made up, of course, of two words. The first one, social, which suggests that this is not purely individual. It's something re relating to the collective, to many of us, to society at large, rather than just us as an individual. But we also have this word justice, which we perhaps think of as a kind of legal term, suggesting that we can get what we deserve, we can get uh, the right thing to happen as a result of people recognising what is just in society. But both of these words are quite contestable and merit us talking about them a little more. Now, the term social justice has quite a long history. Uh, this, this slide, which came from Ronald Sultana, uh, takes it, traces it right back to the, the ancient Greeks and through the Middle Ages, and it pulls out some key theorists as we go along. Uh, most recently, people like John Rawls, but also uh, talking about the idea of social justice as something which might perhaps have been uh, used as a way to counterbalance or challenge the idea of socialism. What I think we see as we go through time is that the nature of this term social justice changes it adapts, it picks up key concepts and ideas from different times. And again, Ronald told me that we have various different traditions, different intellectual traditions that we can think about when we're talking about social justice. We can think about social harmony, equality, equity and difference. And these in turn give us different ideas of justice. The question of whether justice is primarily about getting everyone what they deserve or whether it's primarily about uh, giving everyone an opportunity. These are different definitions and we start to see the, the challenges of thinking about what we mean by justice. So these different definitions of justice ask us, what does justice mean? Equally important, they ask us what counts as injustice. So if we have a sense of what is right and what people might deserve or be entitled to, we also need to think about what is wrong and what people might be punished for. We also think about who is entitled to justice. Is it everyone or is it only certain people? Is it perhaps only the elites in society or only people from a certain country or is justice universal? And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we need to think about who gets to decide what is just. And this is, I think, very important. This idea of justice has some sense of enforcement, some sense that if we don't behave in a just way, something might happen as a consequence. And that is where we get the idea of who decides what is just. So, so far, we've really been thinking about social justice and justice in particular as being a legal category, as a philosophical category. But of course, social justice is also a political category. And it's been used in recent years to draw together lots of different ideas. So we might talk about social justice as a thing that unites uh, perhaps uh, racism or, or anti-racism and it, it unites it with concerns about equality and concerns about stereotyping and feminism and various other kinds of different um, forms of political project which are focused around the idea of giving their community some kind of justice. So in this sense social justice becomes an umbrella term that brings together lots of ideas. Now, Laclau and Mouffe, who are a couple of political theorists, talked about this, this idea of social justice as being a, an umbrella. They talked about it as being a chain. It's a chain of equivalents. They say women 
have particular issues in society. Uh, people from ethnic minorities have particular issues in society. The working classes have particular issues with, in society. Those issues are not all the same, but they have an equivalence. If we put them together, we are stronger when we put all of these things together. So if we can build a political project that links the demands of women who feel oppressed with the demands of gay people who feel oppressed, with the demands of working class people, and so on and so on, we have built a chain of equivalence. And that is a very powerful thing which we can use to actually change society. So this gives us one kind of idea of social justice as a kind of way of connecting a range of different and diffuse political projects. But not everyone agrees. And so we have the idea of the social justice warrior, which has largely been created by right wing political commentators. And they use that to demonize people and ideas and, and particularly often around the arguments around freedom of speech. So this idea that the social just people who believe in social justice, the social justice warrior, as they are characterized, are people who are preventing us from saying things about certain groups or saying that we have to believe certain things in order to be allowed to participate in society. These are people who are demonized as social justice warriors and their ideas are, are demonized as well. But I think there is something in this, while I don't agree with this demonization, I think there is something in it because it builds on the looseness of the definition of social justice. The fact that social justice isn't very easy to define. The fact that, as I've talked about already, it's changed over time. There are different political and philosophical traditions which, which accord different meanings to this term. And then people have tried to use it to bring lots of things together. This makes social justice quite difficult to pin down. And so it allows people to describe themselves as, as pursuing social justice when they believe in quite different things. And I think some people who are critical of this say, well, if it means everything and it encompasses everyone, then does it really mean anything? Is it not too broad? Does it, is it really meaningful? So why did we, in, in the books that we wrote, why did we decide to use this term? Well, we recognize, I think, pluralism. We like the way that it recognized pluralism, that there were many perspectives. This kind of chains of equivalence idea. But more than that, the idea that there are also legitimate different ways of seeing the world, which might also be useful in thinking about the world. So social justice, when we talked about career guidance and social justice, we didn't talk about career guidance for socialism, career guidance for feminism, career guidance for post-colonialism. We used the term of social justice to bring all of these different ideas together and allow us to look from multiple perspectives. And so that pluralism was something that we liked. We also liked the fact that it addresses structural injustice. And it acknowledges that the problems that people face are not only individual, but they're shared with others and built into the social structures. So we actually like the term social justice because it is contestable. We celebrate its contestability. Social justice is not just one thing. We can't completely nail it down. It opens up debate, and this debate actually allows us to discuss what is important, fair, and right. And that's the real usefulness of the term social justice, is that it opens up this question of what do we mean by justice and how can we guarantee justice for as wide a uh, number of people as possible. There's some references here for you to follow this up. 